He does it the only way he knows how. With his massive sports brain sprinkled with a smidgen of rabble rousing. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Oh boy. Kill Switch Engage is coming to Omaha. The Josh's favorite concert venue, the Astro, Saturday, March 29th. What the hell's the Astro? <laughs> Right, you can find out more at 1620thezone.com. You can even win tickets to Kill Switch Engage. I do love La Vista. It's a wonderful community full of wonderful people. That's where you have found out that the Astro is in La Vista? Yeah, there was a bit. I knew where the Astro was. Of everybody. course you did. Pat Oswalt's going to be there. Casey and the Sunshine Band's going to be there. Kill Switch Engage, their most popular song on Spotify, is a song called My Curse. That's right. I wonder if I've heard that before. It has over 231 million streams. It's a lot of streams. Almost as many as 1620thezone.com. Well, think about how many streams we got in 25 years. Do you think it's as many as one Kill Switch Engage song? Couldn't possibly be. Oh, yeah. We've got two. We're cranking out 12 hours of content a day. Yeah, we, we're, yeah, we're getting more. We're getting, we got more than that song. Poor question. Are we better than Kill Switch Engage? <laughs> No, we don't want to pit ourselves against Kill Switch Engage. Yeah, we should be teaming up with Kill Switch Engage. Uh, by the way, it's noon, so we've gone away from the local news and we have put the ticker on the bottom. You know, it's it oh. looks it looks very electiony on the bottom. It does. My favorite sporting event. First poll closing in five hours and fifty four minutes. Wow, we'll be getting results soon. Oh boy, whoopity do! Josh seems excited about this. Uh, I would like to play you one more video from Matt Rule before we get to uh, NFL reaction, overreaction, and my Riola topic. Avidya. This is, uh, this is a comment that did not, uh, probably did not sit well with people yesterday. Oh, I can be the judge of that. There was many problems. I There was many comments I don't think that sat well with people. Get it set. Saddy. Sat. Saddy's sat got well a new people. daddy. I do I do love the line of like you are sat. You you, you are sat. You are sat. You are sat. <laughs> Everyone's talking about how sat, sat, sat. You are sat. Think about like that should be a good lesson to everybody. Take some personal responsibility. What's my role in this? How oh, do I get better? I love personal responsibility. You you look like a guy who does. All right. So here's another quote from Rule yesterday. We'll see how this sits. With you, Josh Odson. Mm. Uh, here is Matt Rule yesterday afternoon. We have some people who we hire as consultants that do like advanced stuff for us each week. So you know, we'll we'll um, talk to them Zoom wise. But I think coming in the building this week is good. I think you know, at the end of the day, everybody needs to feel. Everybody needs to feel this right now. Everyone needs to feel like you know, you know. Everyone needs to feel what I feel. <laughs> everyone needs to feel a little bit of like, hey, we need to get this thing going, right? You know. Um, you know, there's a there's a certain expectation, you know, that you have to have when you're in Nebraska Cornhuskers going to have to play championship football, and it's just not a sometime thing. And so, I think bringing bringing people in, I'll you know, if there's a, I told them if, if there's a young player that can help us, you know, the red shirts are all off, we'll put them out there, like whatever it takes. Everyone needs to feel what I feel. <laughs> I'm not the dog who urinated on the carpet. You don't have to rub my nose in it. I've been sitting in it for 20 years, Matt Rule. I've been hardened by the okay. gulag. Okay. So he's not talking to you. Oh, okay. He's talking to his players. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 They need to look at what you've done. <laughs> yeah, they're rub, literally look at it. rub their nose in it. Look at it. I, 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 that probably didn't sit well with people yesterday, but I would imagine nothing mm. sat well with people yesterday. Nah. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where you sort of have to weather the storm a little bit. I look forward to the changes and and the things that they will do because there will be changes. Things will look a little bit different when Nebraska plays USC next Saturday. Kind of look a at, lot different at three o'clock, right? Is that what I is That's that right. what I saw yesterday? Three o'clock, Big Fox. So I missed the whole game time thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, look at that. So who got the who got the garbage uh, West Coast ten p.m. slot? Nobody? Nobody in the Big Ten, anyway. No. We're asking USC on Fox. They didn't even get big noon kickoff that week. Who didn't? The Big Ten. Yeah, they do. They do? 
Oh no, they don't. Yeah. Wow, look at that. The the yeah. Ohio State Northwestern game is at on BTN. Yeah. Ohio State has not fulfilled their commitments to playing. I believe it's two games on BTN uh-huh. this year. Ah, that explains that. So, yeah, things will look different when Nebraska plays USC in uh, in coming days, and they might have a guy with a skullet on the sideline. That'd be sick. Just getting after it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what Dana Holgerson's uh, role is by the time that happens or how involved he is uh, with the program at that point in time. So the high stakes game of Dylan Rayola. We always talk about Dylan Rayola in one way. Our, or at our, least, our baby boy. That's right, Josh. That That's exactly right. Our sweet, sweet boy, the mm-hmm. Dylon who spits hot fire. Dylon, because I spit hot fire. That guy. That guy. Right, especially before this season. Maybe if we could take you back, you get out of all the muck that you're in right now. We always talked about what happens to the program and to the person when Dylan plays well. Right? Nebraska wins. As far as what that means for the program, right? Nebraska wins. Not only does Nebraska win on the field, but Nebraska wins in recruiting because people want to play with Dylan Raiola. And people want to uh, come to Nebraska. The next guy after Dylan Riola wants to be the next Dylan Riola. You could sell that you develop quarterbacks and you do this. And, th- and this is a place where you could come and have success. Right? That's not that far away from any other recruiting pitch that you you know could could give a guy. But with a five star quarterback, it means more. Because then other five-star quarterbacks down the line look at that and say, I want to be that guy. That's the path that I'm on right now. I want to continue on that path. Nebraska is a viable option for me to go play football. We always talk about it that way. Didn't, can you confirm this, Josh? Is This the, this was a thought process? I can confirm. Okay. Right, That's good. the way it is. What happens when he's not playing very well and they don't win? That's the obvious answer, right? 60 minutes. Yeah, right. That's the obvious answer. You're fired, probably. Mm -hmm. Right? But the why you get fired is maybe even more damning than the, oh, it's just over. Right? Because think about it. You brought in Dylan Raiola. Unimpeachable talent. Five-star quarterback, not necessarily with the idea that he's going to be the savior of the program, but that he would patch up, help patch up some of the warts that have been affecting Nebraska football for the last however many years. The roster is in good enough position. We've always thought the roster was in good enough position. If Nebraska Uh, adds the variable of good quarterback play, we talked about it all offseason. If Nebraska adds the variable of good quarterback play to a above average to maybe great quarterback play, what would that mean for the program? Right? If it doesn't work out that way, and instead he, as it currently looks, is getting sucked into the snake pit, into the quicksand of poisonous Nebraska football, um, because, my God, I mean, you can't even make the argument. He's he he's regressed. I mean, Look how they massacred my boy. He's regressed. I mean, he is not as good as he was in September. Point blank. Period. Now, I don't know if that's gone. It's clearly not gone. He's talented, right? But he's he's thinking about too much. He's got too much on his plate. He's probably injured. He's got a lot of different stuff going on. And this is before the back injury on Saturday night. So why do you, you know, why does it look worse on the other side if it doesn't work out? Because you took this guy who was unquestionably talented. And according to most, he's ahead of schedule and turned it into a pile of mush. How do you sell to anyone else that this is a great place to come play and go play in the NFL afterwards? It is a high risk, high reward game. We didn't think about that when he first got here. And then there's also the, you know, the political aspects of him being a Riola that I think matter here as well. 
right? But we always thought about the good side. We got lucky. We got this guy. He's attached to us. He would have never chosen Nebraska as an option had his dad not been an All-American here. That is awesome, right? We'll take it any way we can get it. I don't care if the guy's a Husker legacy. I don't care if this and this and this and this, whatever. He's good. He's he's the best quarterback they've ever recruited. We'll take him. And it's, it's going to work out, right? You insert him into the situation and it works out. We never talked about what if it doesn't. The what if it doesn't is a tough pill to swallow. Because if you can't get it done with that guy at the quarterback position and he gets spit out like every other Nebraska quarterback and potentially even faster and worse. Right? Think about that. I thought he was above all of the Nebraska quarterback um, vacuum that has chewed up and spit out. Why would you so go so many? So rule said yesterday, you know, we'll have a bunch of good. He was asked about recruiting and how he can sell the notion, whatever going forward. Obviously they need to make progress. And he said, we're going to have good players. You know, we're, 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 we're always going to have good players. And I think to a certain extent, he's right. But, People will always be able to say about you. You ruined Dylan Raiola. (laughs) That is a hard one to have on your resume, Josh. That is a hard one to have on your resume. If that ends up being the case. I would recommend finding some white out and just covering right over that line. You do not want that on your resume. That's a bad one. It's a bad one to have on there. It's like crimes committed, <laughs> ruined Dylan Raiola. That's sort of the headline. Yeah. Right. There's a couple other things, you know, had some bad quotes and wore yes. an ugly smock. Uh, maybe made fun of Deion Sanders once or something like that. But the, the, the top one, the, the big charge screwed up the progression of Dylan Raiola. That's, that would that would be a hard one to come back from, Josh. So it's a high stakes game. Welcome to Rutgers. Oh, you want to play? Love when we need a quarterback. Welcome to Rutgers. Love to show you around. Uh, here you're looking at Nebraska. Well, they ruined five star quarterback Dylan Ray. Well, you don't want to go there. Stay in Piscataway. Seriously, like if I'm recruiting against Nebraska, it's it's that simple. If it ends up being that way, yeah. if it ends up being, because I mean, just look, just look at it's amazing. It's amazing to watch. You, I'm telling you, go back and watch UTEP. Go back and watch Colorado. That's a different. It's a totally different person. It's not the same guy. And so th- herein lies Matt Rule's plight yet again. Why? Why has this happened? Why has this happened? So we get an email here from Jim on Jim. the uh, on the Equal Bank inbox. Jim says, "What if? What if we're overthinking?" He didn't say this. What if we're overthinking it? But the question he did ask is, what if he's not that good? We saw it. He is that good. (laughs) He is that good. He just hasn't developed. And he's developed backwards. He's reverse developed. He is that good. And it was the Nebraska coaching. It is. It is the Nebraska coaching staff's responsibility to take a good player and get the best out of him and make him better in the process. There is no what if he was that good. He's He is that good. He is that good. I, I, I believe that. Anyway. And I don't think that fact is really all that disputable because we've seen it. We've seen how good he is. We've seen how good he is. It's just the other stuff that is, um, you know, sort of, or ruined it. I got I, it's not over. Like as we say this was such you know, in such a definitive nature right now and I don't mean for it to be that way, but it, it's it, it's devolved, I mean completely since then. All right, want to hear from you guys 402-951-1620 on the uh, 42 degrees the source hotline. Jeff writes in. He says they gave him too much of the offense, need to simplify, give him one or two reads and then get him confident. I agree. Like I I, I agree. Yeah. I think you have a um you have a you have a rhythm quarterback clearly talented makes makes i mean some of the 
early in the year, he's making some of the better throws that I've seen a Nebraska quarterback make, right? Um, he, um, sorry, what was, uh, uh, now I lost my train of thought here. Oh, oh, uh, about giving him too much of the offense. I apologize. He's a rhythm guy, right? So get him some stuff going early. Um, I think if they, honestly, if they could have that part of his development back, you know what he said at the beginning, what they said at the beginning of the year, which was ever just going to throw everything at him and, you know, he'll be a better play, player for this at the end. He won't be a better player. And Rule was still true to that statement yesterday, right? It's like, oh, he's going to be, he's going to be a special player at the end of this entire thing. Not if he loses confidence and doesn't get it back. <laughs> he just, he just, he looks like a, he looks like a player and a person who's not very confident right now. And that is crazy because he was one of the more confident freshmen I've seen at yeah. that position coming in. Remember he didn't the, even have to say anything, and the team was his. We were Remember, about arm took, slot he, all the time. Yeah, he and... took over from a leadership perspective. Like right away, he had a voice. Mm -hmm. You know, he was ahead of everyone. He was. Well, that was that was maybe a mistake to say in hindsight as well, because that has set a lot of the the pathway for the way we have these conversations now. Yeah. And that's regrettable. I think that that's that's regrettable. Like we we don't need to we don't need to say <laughs> Dylan's better than everybody, and everybody needs to catch up to him. As a guy who's played like three games at that point, we don't we didn't need to say that. <laughs> didn't need to say that. Looks like a bad one in hindsight. Sure, I think so. I think so. All right, let's take a phone call here uh, before we get to NFL reaction overreaction. Here is Joe in Vegas. Joe, what's going on? Connor, good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello, my friend. Well, so I've been listening to this, and I know that I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be in the minority here or not. And this pains me to say this, but remember how last year when Deion Sanders came to Colorado and he completely flushed every bad player or perceived bad player out of the, out of the program and got all new guys? And then he proceeded to then do the same thing last year. I am convinced that Nebraska's problem, and granted, this is now at the time where you can do this. I think now looking back, you still got too many Scott Frost loser mentality players on that team. And they can sit there till they're blue in the face and say that they have changed and that they have gotten better. But the thing is, is if you put a diamond in a, in a, in a turd box, eventually it's going to become a turd like the rest of them. And I, I, and I kind of think that's where we are. I mean, it doesn't matter what rule does. He's got, I mean, how many guys did he keep over? I mean, I think that our Nebraska's defensive Everyone. line is the most overrated defensive line. That we've ever, I mean, Nash Huffunker and Ty Robinson are just two slow white guys. And for whatever reason, See, because they've been here forever, everyone loves them. See, and then you look, and then yeah. you look at the wide receivers and the offensive line, and it's all these same losers that Frost brought in. And I know yet you, you can't completely gut the team, but man, looking at what Colorado did last year compared to this year, and then when you look at it from the standpoint, I know they're playing in the Big Twelve, they're playing against weaker competition, but hell, they're still winning. I mean, I don't know. I, I, apathy for me has set in to the point now to where. I'm going out to the USC game next, you know, in two weeks. I'm fully expecting their, their, the new quarterback that they're going to have play for because they benched the kid that beat, beat LSU. So now they're bringing in the second string guy or whatever he is. I'm fully expecting him to look like the next carnation of Tom Brady next week. I really am. I, I mean, I, the defense, I think, is overrated because if you go back and look, unless we stop them to 14 points, we lose. And and they're sick. They don't stop the run well when they when they actually have to. I know Ohio State they did all right, but I agree with what Gary said on the morning show. Ohio State was looking ahead to Penn State. If if they were fully focused on Nebraska, they probably would have pulled an Indiana. I, I I don't know. I'm just you, you look up and down the roster, and it's like I think Matt Rule's a good. I think Matt Rule's a good coach. I think Satterfield was a, an absolute uh, mistake. 
I think McGuire was a mistake. I'm, I don't know about Barthol, the, the running backs coach. It's hard to say if he's a good coach or not because all he's coaching is crap. So, I mean, it's just – it's infuriating with apparently the NIL money that we apparently have and everything else that we can at least figure out a way to just get serviceable players in there that can compliment Dylan. Because you're absolutely right. He's, he's a shell of whatever he was at the beginning of the year. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, we're going to lose the last six games because we, are, we can't score. And we thought we had a quarterback. I mean, we don't throw it down the field. Everything is a screen pass. I don't know if it's because our wide receivers can't get open. Um, but Donny, um, he runs like he's got concrete shoes on. I mean, it's just aggravating to watch. Joe, thanks for the call, my friend. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Joe's at a loss for words. He was clearly not at a loss for words. I'm still stuck on diamond in the turd okay. box. That's what we have to discuss. First. Thank you. What is that? What is a turd box? Josh, what's well, a turd box? So I think, and I, is, I, it's this magical thing that turns all your things into turds. I, I that is crazy. I, and I appreciate Joe doing this. I think he was going to say S box and the turd was. Yeah. People are speculating I, that was Jason Peter. If that was Jason Peter, there would have been a lot more cuss words. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't Jason Peter. It was just Joe. I think Jason Peter was the guy in that uh, Jason Kelsey video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think he was. Mm. Sounded right. like him. Right. So. What's the turd box? First of all, why are you putting diamonds in it? I don't like. I get where I get where Joe is coming from. I would not put a diamond in a turd box. I'd like to put a turd in a diamond box. See what happens. Yeah, <laughs> like in this mythical thing is the. Is it like a cocoon? You know, it, like it turns <laughs> into a. Di- can I can I nestle the diamond in there? <laughs> and what is a turd box? What is the turd box? What is so, even the, the complicated version of the, 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 the more R-rated version of a turd box? An S box. What is a, an S box? Like a like an S hole? <laughs> yeah, I guess. That is that what okay. Maybe, all right. Maybe I don't I don't know. We all live in a, we all live in a turd box? Maybe. Um so we need to crowdsource a poll question out of this. Yeah, go ahead. Do you put your diamonds in a turd box? If you put a diamond in a turd box, does it become does it, a turd? Does it turn into a turd? Yeah, that's probably the one. Okay. If you put some, if you put your diamond into a turd box, does it become a turd? Okay. All right, that's good. The other thing. I don't misunderstand what I was saying earlier. I don't think that Ty Robinson and Nash Hutmaker and Isaac Gifford and John Bullock John Bullock, I would keep him separate. I, I don't I don't think that those guys are bad football players. I don't think that they are bad football players. In fact, I think that they are good football players. Mm. They just don't play well enough. Like and I know that sounds stupid. And if a coach said that, you would just jump him. You you would just be like, well, who's falling? Blah, 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 blah. You know, it would be really bad. It'd be really bad for me if I was a coach and I said that. But do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I, there's something? There's another variable mm-hmm. there at play with those guys that doesn't allow them to play to their capabilities all the time. So I don't get it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But those guys are good football players. I th- I, I think that, and I, that's why they keep playing. That's why they keep playing. So for all the people who's like, well, we just gotta, you know, boot, you know, put in Harburg, right? They're they're good. The first stringers are good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just don't know what to expect from them, and that's the hard part. And that's why I do think that they should probably try out some more guys in the in the final three games of the season. Now the things you're saying, Connor, you sound like you're right at the cusp of whatever mental hurdle hex curse oh yeah the rest is totally cursed is okay that was my that was my other reaction to saturday everyone um you know who's been calling in the show for years talk talk about how nebraska's curse and there's no other explanation for it 
you guys are right. I was wrong. It's cursed. <laughs> what? That, you, that you, okay. Yeah, I, I'm giving in on that one. We have not. You're right. We have not, we have not really dialed in on that. What did you think during the last drive? We didn't. What did, I think during the last drive? Did you think? No. Oh, God, no. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. no okay. I knew halfway through the third quarter, Nebraska's down by three touchdowns. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> they're going to come back in this game. They're going to get to the point where they're a touchdown down. They're going to get the ball, and they're not going to score. Boom. Backbreaking intercept. I was standing 13 feet away for when they threw it to Jacory Barney, and he and the ball flies up into the air, and he kicks it to the other player. His knee. Hit the b- Nebraska is cursed. Miracle, of course they're cursed. Miracles giveth and miracles taketh away. It's unbelievable. Of course Nebraska is cursed. This doesn't happen anywhere else. Get out the Stumanji list. Do, would you like to l- see the Stumanji list again? I've seen it! It's so unbelievable. It doesn't make any sense. I want to burn it. This- it's digital. I can't. Look at all those drives. <laughs> Nebraska's final offensive possessions when tied or losing by eight points or less 2018 to 2014. They've only scored three times out of 31 drives and only once was it enough to actually win the football game. Once. Once. They tied the game in Iowa in 2018 with a touchdown and two-point conversion. They went down and won against Northwestern on the field goal kick that by the safety that went through everyone's fingertips. And they scored to tie the game against Wisconsin last year before having another opportunity in overtime and throwing an interception. That's it. Literally none of the other drives have resulted in anything other than pain and sadness. So yeah, Nebraska's cursed. Of course they are. That's the missing variable. Why haven't I seen this all along? It's only taken till now to crystallize it in my head. It's curse.